General, Brigadier General Jason E. Kelly, and the Post Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Eric Oates, welcome to the United States Army Training Center and Fort Jackson for the graduation of Companies A, B, C, D, and E from the 2nd Battalion, 13th Infantry Regiment, 193rd Infantry Brigade. Please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Jonathan Stevens. Let's, let's pray. Dear God, we come before you today thanking you for who you are and what you have done for us. As we begin this ceremony today, we thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy. And we are reminded and ever grateful for the men and women who have served and defended this great nation. Thank you for the two soldiers who will be recognized for the many years of service and sacrifice to our nation. Bless them in their retirement. As the psalmist so loudly declared, this is the day in which you were made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Today, God, we, we, will, we will rejoice. We rejoice and celebrate the accomplishments of the newest 213 graduating soldiers. We rejoice in the strength that you provided them. We rejoice in your presence that have been with them. We rejo rejoice in the peace that you provided them, and we rejoice in the purposes that follow them. God, every sleepless night, every long hour, every push-up, every mile, every struggle that they've endured here at basic training, we rejoice because it has not been in vain, because they stand here today soldiers of the United States Army. We thank you, God, for the leadership that has been provided. We thank you for every drill sergeant, every command team, we thank you, God, for uh, the, these next generation of great soldiers. We ask now a special blessing over their future training and careers. We pray a special blessing over their families and protection as they travel home. God, may you bless this ceremony today, and may we be ever grateful and joyful for who you are and what you have done. It is in your most holy name that we pray these things. Amen. Please be seated. The purpose of today's ceremony is to recognize the commitment of the men and women you see standing in formation before you today, who have chosen to serve their country as soldiers. This review is the last official formation in the career of two lifelong soldiers and for our newest soldiers. Not everyone successfully completes this difficult period of training, but those in formation today represent disciplined, motivated, physically fit soldiers who exemplify the Army's seven core values loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They are imbued with the warrior ethos and display the tenets of putting the mission first, never accepting defeat, never quitting, and never leaving behind a fallen comrade. This is an important day, and these soldiers can take great pride in their accomplishments. To the parents, families, and friends of these soldiers, Fort Jackson extends a very warm and sincere welcome we are justifiably proud of the soldiers and are truly honored that they have chosen to join our ranks. Please direct your attention to the left of the formation. The units marching today from your left to right are the 282nd Army Band under the direction of Chief Warrant Officer 3, Kevin Pick, graduating soldiers from Company A, B, the Battalion Color Guard, and graduating soldiers from Companies C, D, and E. Identified by their distinctive headgear, are the drill sergeants. These dedicated non-commissioned officers form the backbone of the Army's training center system and are selected based on professional competence, leadership ability, and years of service. These men and women undergo intensive training to earn the right to wear their distinctive hat and insignia. With the drill sergeant hat goes the important responsibility of molding civilian men and women into soldiers. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Major Samuel Warren, who serves as the executive officer for the 2nd Battalion, 13th Infantry Regiment. He and the battalion staff are positioned on the field. The reviewing officer for today's graduation is the commander of the 2nd Battalion, 13th Infantry Regiment, 
Lieutenant Colonel Paul Hargrove. On his left is Command Sergeant Major Joseph Magnot, the battalion's senior non-commissioned officer, master trainer, and principal advisor to the commander. The commander of troops will now bring forward the colors and persons to be honored. Confidence and commitment are the hallmarks of professionalism. The soldiers and the drill sergeants coming forward will be recognized for their excellence in training and duty performance and serve as examples to all. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthem. It is appropriate for soldiers in uniform and all armed forces veterans to salute the American flag. We ask our civilian guests to please remove your headgear and place your right hand over your heart as our national anthem is played. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to witness the retirement of two lifelong soldiers. All soldiers begin their journey by graduating from basic combat training. Over the years, there have been changes to how the Army conducts basic training. However, many things remain the same. It was during basic training that these two soldiers were first introduced to the Army values. It is where they learned the importance of teamwork and that the Army truly is a family. That Army family is still embedded in what is done here today. Over 20 years ago, these soldiers took the same oath to defend this nation that your loved ones on the field have taken. We salute these great soldiers as they pass the torch of freedom along to the newest generation of soldiers, your loved ones standing on the field today. A certificate of appreciation from the President of the United States is presented to those retiring today. It reads, I extend to you my personal thanks and the sincere appreciation of our grateful nation for your contribution of honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during critical times in its history with a devotion to duty and a spirit of sacrifice in keeping with the proud traditions of the military service. 
I trust that in the coming years you will maintain an active interest in the armed forces and the purpose for which you serve. Those who follow in your footsteps will draw inspiration from your commitment, dedication, and sacrifices made to ensure the protection of our American freedoms. My best wishes to you for happiness and success in the future. A certificate of retirement from the Chief of Staff, United States Army, is also presented to those retiring today and to the spouses of today's retirees. The Chief of Staff of the United States Army sends the following certificate. It reads, on the occasion of the retirement of your spouse from active status within the United States Army, you have earned our grateful appreciation for your unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Your unfailing support and understanding help to make possible your spouse's lasting contribution to the nation. At this time, Brigadier General Kelly and Command Sergeant Major Oaks will recognize our retirees for their service to the United States Army. Master Sergeant George Jr. Johnson, having served honorably for 26 years of service, is placed on the retirement list effective 23 August 2023. Entered active duty on 05 February 1997 and will reside in Hampton, Virginia upon retirement. His fondest professional achievement is becoming a SARC. The nation salutes. Master Sergeant George Jr. Johnson, United States Army, retired. Please join me in a round of applause for our retiree and their families. Although newly retired, they will always be a part of our Army family. Sergeant First Class Moya Gay C. Willoughby Sherrod, having served honorably for 20 years of service, is placed on the retirement list effective 01 September 2023. She entered active duty on 06 August 2023 and will reside in Elgin, South Carolina upon retirement. Her fondest professional achievement is becoming the lead for CASA DMI. The nation salutes. Sergeant First Class Moya Gay C. Willoughby Sheriff, United States Army, retired. Please join me in a round of applause for our retiree and their families. Although newly retired, they will always be a part of our Army family. The individuals most responsible for the training of these soldiers are the drill sergeants who are carefully selected by the Department of the Army. The drill sergeant campaign hat and badge have been a stoic symbol of professionalism and pride since 1962. At this time, we ask that all past and present drill sergeants please stand as Staff Sergeant Carr, the drill sergeant of the cycle for the 2nd Battalion, 13th Infantry Regiment, recites the drill sergeant's creed. I'm a drill sergeant. I will assist each individual in their efforts to become a highly motivated, well-disciplined, physically and mentally fit soldier, capable of defeating any enemy on today's modern battlefield. I will instill pride in all I train, pride itself, in the Army, and in country. 
I will insist that each soldier needs to maintain the Army standards of military bearing and courtesy consistent with the high tradition of the U.S. Army. I will lead by example, never require a soldier to attempt any task that I would not do myself. But first, last, and always, I'm an American soldier sworn to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. I am a drill sergeant. This will defend. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Hargrove and Command Sergeant Major Joseph Magni will now present the awards. The Outstanding Drill Sergeant of the Cycle for 213th Infantry Regiment is Drill Sergeant Zaren Carr from Napoleon, Ohio. The Soldier Leader of the Cycle for Alpha Company is Private Nathan McClellan from LaGrange, Georgia. The Soldier of the Cycle for Alpha Company is PB2 Emilio Almazan from Corona, California. The Soldier Leader of the Cycle for Bravo Company is Specialist John Hussey from East Bridgewater, Massachusetts. The Soldier of the Cycle for Bravo Company is Specialist Matthew Villalobos from Edwards, California. The Soldier Leader of the Cycle for Charlie Company is Private First Class Ryan Massey from Reno, Nevada. The Soldier of the Cycle for Charlie Company is Private First Class Hillary Long from Sheridan, Arkansas. The Soldier Leader of the Cycle for Delta Company is PB2 Mallory Shea from Edgewater, Maryland. The Soldier of the Cycle for Delta Company is Private Aldemir Para from Miami, Florida. The Soldier Leader of the Cycle for Echo Company is Specialist Sarah Reznikova from Columbus, Georgia. The Soldier of the Cycle for Echo Company is Private First Class Zachariah Hanna from St. Augustine, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 2nd Battalion, 13th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Hargrove. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and families, on behalf of Brigadier General Kelly, commander of U.S. Army Training Command at Fort Jackson, welcome to where we make American soldiers. Can I get another round of applause for the soldiers on the field? They look magnificent. All right, General Kelly, CSM Oaks, Colonel Hutton, Colonel Price, Ms. Price, Colonel White, Ms. White, CSM Duncan, distinguished guests, fellow commanders, family and friends, again, welcome. It is an honor to speak with you today. Uh, for those who joined us yesterday at Family Day, I hope you enjoyed it. It was awesome. I was pumped up. The energy was great. It was spirited but I'm gonna ask you to tone it down just a little bit today, okay? There's gonna be some applause, 
That's wonderful. These soldiers have to hear some commands as we get into the ceremony. So keep it to an applause and not a ruckus, okay? Look, it, it was a great ceremony, uh, but today's is more stoic, so I appreciate that. And as we mark this uh, graduation from basic combat training, it's appropriate to do so with a nod to the past as well as an eye to the future. Fort Jackson assumed basic combat training legacy uh, that first started at Valley Forge, the birthplace of our Army, the professionalization of the Corps, and basic training. Uh, and Fort Jackson did that in 1917. And it is here today where roughly 50% of all soldiers joining the Army get their start. That is why we can truly say that victory starts here. Throughout that time, Fort Jackson has earned its place in the history books, producing generations of American soldiers who have selflessly served and defended the United States of America through both world wars and beyond. Some of those paid the ultimate price and are buried overseas in the lands where they fell. Many more returned home, continued to serve America, both in and out of uniform. It is not an exaggeration to say that our great nation would not exist had it not been for the soldiers trained at Fort Jackson. We should all be grateful for their example. It should be a source of pride for us today. We also have our retirees and veterans who by their example can still teach us. Many are among us today and I would ask that all of you, all veterans and retirees, please stand so that we can recognize you. Please. Thank you for answering the call to serve our great nation. What a legacy and an example. Thank you. Joining the Champion Battalion on the parade field is the 282nd Band. They're a central part of this ceremony and we're fortunate to have them. Can I please get a round of applause for the band? One piece of history you may not know is that we, 2nd Battalion, 13th Infantry, draw our name Champion Battalion and our motto, 40 Rounds, from the Vicksburg Campaign of the Civil War. And just as the soldiers of the 13th Infantry Regiment led the Union forces up to Champion Hill and placed the guide on, on that defensive structure, the drill sergeants today of 213 lead from the front and set the example each and every day. Our mission would not be possible without the Champion Battalion drill sergeants and the strong group of cadre that support them. The drill sergeants mentor and train and develop and mold the most precious resource the Army has at its disposal, a lethal soldier. Let's recognize the drill sergeants of 213. Thank you. Now what about the soldiers? Ten weeks ago, you entrusted us, your sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives. You have, no doubt, noticed a change in them. It is a good change. It is a positive change. It is grounded in the Army values and anchored to a soldier's discipline. The soldiers on the field are lethal. They are physically fit. They are mentally tough. Each one of them showed fortitude and grit, overcoming challenges here in basic combat training. They know the value of teamwork. They stand before you and wear the pride belonging to the American soldier. And what is that pride? It is the pride earned through overcoming trials, through being tested and being found worthy. It is earned through learning you are stronger as a team than as an individual. It is the pride you feel knowing you are part of something greater than yourself. And while it is earned and internalized individually, it is a pride worn collectively. And what a collection of American soldiers. 1,184 before you on the field today. They come from all walks of life, all points across this great nation, and not surprisingly, across this globe. 38 states and territories represented, 35 countries. There are over a dozen languages spoken at home that are not English. 44 soldiers just one hour ago became American citizens. 
How outstanding. Thank you. What a milestone. Now to the graduating soldiers on the field, I say this. By now, you realize there is a strength within you. One you can rely on when things get tough. One you can share with your battle buddy through a well-timed word of encouragement, and you have done so. What is more, you were given and have internalized the tools and training to meet the challenges you will face and overcome them. You have earned the right to take your place in the ranks of this Army, and I welcome you. As you look to a future of limitless possibilities, remember the past, and I charge you to carry the spirit of 1776 forward, embrace your future in the Army, and be all you can be. 40 rounds. 40 rounds! No ground to give. Victory. Today's soldier is, above all, a warrior. Adaptive, confident, and competent. As a soldier, you are totally committed to the warrior ethos, grounded in Army values, and determined to destroy the enemies of the United States of America and her allies. The United States Army Soldiers' Creed embodies this commitment. To the soldiers on the field, the uniform you wear at this moment is more than an outward display of your vocational choice. Your uniform is a symbol of a nation and an unspoken assurance to all who see you that you are a willing and able protector of the freedoms fought so arduously for by all who have gone before and those who will bravely come after. You have become what you set out to be, a soldier in the United States Army. The Soldier's Creed is your declaration of your unshakable commitment to the ideals this nation was founded upon and will continue to guarantee. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as Private First Class Ryan Massey presents a battalion certificate of achievement to the retirees and then leads the soldiers standing before you through the reciting of the Soldier's Creed. Please be seated. In 
In consideration for those around you, we ask that you please remain seated and in the bleachers until all soldiers have passed the reviewing stand and the conclusion of the ceremony is announced. As you are approached by the American flag, it is appropriate to rise and remain standing until it is passed to your right. Once the ceremony has concluded, family members of awardees may meet their soldier under the canopy located to the left of the bleachers. All other family members and friends, please meet your soldier on the field once instructed by the narrator and by respective companies. The 13th Regiment was reconstituted in May 1861. It was organized as one of the nine three battalion regiments of regulars with each battalion containing eight companies of infantry. In contrast to the original 10 regular regiments of infantry, which were organized on the traditional 10 company line. During the American Civil War, it participated in the battles of Hayes Bluff, Champion Hill, Black River, and on 19 May 1863, took part in the assault at Vicksburg, where the unit earned its motto, first at Vicksburg. Following the Civil War, the Army was reorganized by Congress, and in July 1866, the 13th was divided into three regiments with each battalion receiving two additional companies and was organized along traditional lines. The 1st Battalion retained the designation of the 13th Infantry. After World War II, the unit was inactivated at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. On 17 August 1949, the regiment was activated once again at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, as part of the 8th Infantry Division, where it remained until 1 August 1954. The 8th Infantry Division was transferred to Fort Carson, Colorado, and the 13th went with it, where it resumed its training mission. In January 1956, the regiment began to receive permanent party personnel, as well as new recruits. Basic training for these recruits began in mid-February and segued immediately into advanced training. Both training blocks were completed by mid-June when the regiment achieved combat-ready status. In August 1957, the regiment was reorganized under the Potomac system as the 1st Battle Group, 13th Infantry Regiment, and the old guidons were retired and new guidons for the 1st Battle Group were issued. In January 1958, the 1st Battle Group, 13th Infantry Regiment, moved from New Ulm, Germany to Sandhoff. The 1st Battalion was posted to Baumholder, whilst the 2nd Battalion was posted to Mannheim and remained there until 1 August 1984, when it was inactivated and relieved from assignment to the 8th Infantry Division. On 27 February 1988, the 13th Infantry Regiment was transferred to the United States Army Training and Doctrine Command and reorganized at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, where it conducts basic combat training as part of the 193rd Infantry Brigade. Reviews can be traced to the Middle Ages when rulers, as a way of showing their strength, were likely to have military ceremonies. In the American Army, reviews were originally outlined in Baron Friedrich von Steuben's Blue Book and practiced by revolutionary cadets. A review consisted of four stages, formation of troops, presentation and honors, inspection, and a march and review. Today's reviews have incorporated three additional stages, honors to the nation, remarks, and a conclusion. Passing the reviewing stand is the commander of troops, Major Samuel Warren, and the battalion staff. The 82nd Army Band is commanded by Chief Warrant Officer 3, Kevin Pick. The drum man is Staff Sergeant Jacob Davis. Alpha Company is commanded by Captain Peter O'Neill. First platoon is led by Senior Drill Sergeant Kassan 